Hey, it's Carrie from Lovely Etc. And today I'm gonna to be doing a really fun furniture makeover. I'm gonna be working on this caned bench, which is very much not my style, but has huge potential. I got it off Facebook Marketplace really cheap and I know it's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be showing you how I take a dated piece of furniture and turn it into something beautiful that looks like it came from a really high-end store. And I'm also gonna be showing how to take a piece of wooden furniture like this and transform it so that it's safe to use outdoors because what I really need is a nice bench for my front porch. I'm starting off with some demo. I'm getting rid of this big fluffy cushion and I'm also getting rid of these cutouts on the arms. The easiest way to redo a bench like this would be to simply put new fabric over the seat. But I didn't wanna do that because I'm gonna be using this outside and I really don't like upholstered furniture outside. At the very least, you wanna have a removable cushion. So instead, I'm gonna give it a wooden seat. Originally, I was just planning to use the frame exactly as it was and add a new seat, but it turned out this front piece that was right here was pretty warped once I removed the old upholstery. So I took off the old piece of wood that was here and replaced it with this piece of scrap wood that I have. This actually came from my closet when I was removing the old shelves to make my new DIY closet organizer. So I'm always looking for ways to reuse what I've already got. And the piece of wood that was here, I will look for some way that I can reuse it somewhere else. I added some more support with cheap two by two boards around the edges of my bench and now I'm ready to add the seat. Originally, I was planning to buy uh, wood planks and make a wood plank seat, but then I started looking at the original seat and I realized that underneath all the upholstery and foam, it actually had a really nice plywood seat that was in great condition and it was already cut to almost the right size, so I decided to use that instead. So this is the plywood that was underneath the upholstery. I used my upholstery staple remover to take the old fabric and foam off of the plywood backing. This little tool is super handy for any kind of reupholstery project, but if you don't have one, you can also just use a flathead screwdriver and needle nose pliers to get rid of all those staples. And now I have this nice plywood seat. I did add a little strip of wood along the top. So here's the back of that piece of wood. And you can see I added a little strip of wood across one end and attached it with pocket screws so it'd be really sturdy. And I did that because I wanted my wood seat to hang over the end a little bit. And when it was upholstered, it was recessed into this section. And now I want it to go over so it's more comfortable for the legs. So now I'm ready to add this in place. And now we have a bench. It still needs a little work, but it's nice and sturdy. So that's a good sign. So now I need to get it ready for some paint and I need to fill in the holes on the sides where I cut off the original detail and prime everything and add paint. Like I mentioned before, I am planning to use this bench outside on our front porch. And I've used indoor wood furniture like this outside before with good success. So I feel confident that I can make it work. But there's a few things you need to keep in mind if you're considering doing the same thing. First of all, if you're putting your furniture out completely exposed to sun and rain with no cover, it's really just not gonna last. It's not a good idea. Um, even in a covered situation, if you live somewhere with really extreme weather, it could be a problem. I live in Virginia, we have all four seasons, we have hot, cold, snow, lots of rain, but it's not the desert, it's not the tundra. So I've had good luck with things lasting outside for years in a covered setting. But there are certain things you need to do to make sure that your furniture finish will last. If you're using paint, you need to make sure that it's a paint that is appropriate for outdoor use and exterior paint. Um, the reason they're different is they are rated to hold up to UV rays and extremes in temperature and resist moisture and all the things you need protection from outdoors. Painting is the easiest way to get a finish that you know is really gonna stand up. But if you're not painting, you're gonna need to use some other kind of sealer over your wood that's rated for exterior use and can hold up to those elements as well. The other thing to know is that whether you're painting or sealing some other way, it's different than painting something indoors. You have to cover every single surface. When I'm painting a dresser or something to use in my house, a lot of times I don't paint the back, I don't paint the underneath of the drawers, I don't paint inside the drawers. There's a whole lot of things you can get away with not painting because nobody's ever gonna see them. But when you're painting something to be used outside, even the parts that are not gonna be seen, like the underneath of my bench, have to be painted because if they're not, that wood is still gonna take in moisture and it's gonna lead to all kinds of warping and other kinds of problems. So you want every surface sealed. And also, of course, please do not put 
anything that is super expensive and precious to you or your grandmother's antiques outside, even on your covered porch, because it's not going to last as long as it would inside. Most of the stuff that I've used outside has been stuff that I found at yard sales or on the side of the road and fixed up cheap. And I felt good about getting some extra years of life out of it. It's not stuff that I want to have forever for the rest of my life. Okay, so for my bench, the next thing I need to do is use some wood filler to fill in those holes where the details on the sides used to be and put on a coat of primer. I used Zinsser oil-based primer to prime my bench. It's my favorite primer for painting furniture because it sticks to any finish and it seals in wood tannins so that they don't bleed through your final finish and yellow your paint, especially when you're painting a light color. And then I followed that with a couple of coats of a light gray exterior paint. When you're painting caned furniture like this, it's actually the perfect time to use a paint sprayer like I did with my wicker furniture last year. But this time I used a foam roller and a paintbrush instead. So if you're painting caned furniture, the main thing to keep in mind is you want to use as little paint as possible to get good coverage because you don't want to gum up the caning. So for me, I found the best way to do it was to put a very light coat of paint on with my roller and then use a small brush to spread it out to make sure that there weren't any thick areas and then also I made sure to check the other side of the caning each time I painted to make sure that it wasn't dripping out the back side. So here's my finished bench. I love how it turned out. It's beautiful, it's sturdy, it's going to make great seating for our porch and I think it would work in a whole bunch of other parts of our house as well. And I feel pretty confident that it is going to have new life for many years to come as long as my kids don't jump all over it and do something crazy to destroy it. Since I was able to use scrap wood that I already had left over from other projects and I even used paint left over from when I built my daybed last year, I spent almost no money on this project, which is of course always my favorite. If you haven't yet, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel, Lovely Etc., where I share lots of inexpensive ideas for creating a home that you love.